time it is. Marvin Devine. Hoover. Axel. And you know how we do. <laughs> yeah, I got the juice, yeah, I got the juice Quick game cool, make them look like cool Always play cool, that's the biggest rule Fuck it, what they doing, keep on doing I'm not depressed. Well, why would you think I'm depressed? I'm not depressed. I mean, okay, I did lose a little weight. I wasn't going out. No, I was scared to go out. The corona thing, I had to wear like 50 pairs of gloves. I don't know how many masks. I couldn't breathe. Matter of fact, I passed out outside while I was out there. Mm-hmm. I did. I passed out. I got sick. Then now, what? Now they want us to get the vaccine. I don't know. You have it. You got the vaccine? Well, I don't know yet. Well, let me see how I do you first. How many you got? You got both of them? Well, let me see if you grow another eye or arm or something first. Mm-mm. People been trying to get rid of us for years. I don't want that to be the thing to make them get rid of us. Well, I maybe do my research or whatever, read up on it. I don't know. You know, I just know crazy stuff been happening and I just don't want nothing else happening to me. I already dealt with all kinds of illnesses already, girl. I ain't got time to talk. What, what time is it anyway? I got to go. Mm -mm. I got to go. Stop talking to me. I got to go. I said it to you first. Well, go on with your vaccinated self. Good night. Goodbye. Because I want to go see my show, my girl, my friend, Lila, Leela, Layla, Lisa, because this is the Lisa the show giving you the 411 in the kidney world hi guys happy sunday to you how is everything going i hope wonderful great and wonderful happy black history month oh i got that on for this and i got my colors on for the kidney awareness how about that and green Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. How about that? 
I'm glad to be alive. Whoever I am, whatever I am, I am glad to be alive. And I'm blessed and highly favored. Okay. Psalms 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. How about that? I ain't mad at you. Well, let me tell you about my show, uh, my show guest today. Oh, she's excellent. She's wonderful. She's marvelous. She's hardworking. She's a mother. She's a grandmother. She's an overseer. She's a pastor. And she's a doctor and a first responder in the clergy field. How about that? Saving lives and communities. Okay, we're going to introduce Cheryl Anthony, right? She's the president of, of the Woman of Faith advocating for change uh-huh that's right with judah international christian centers incorporated okay yeah i almost couldn't read my own handwriting but she'll tell you a little more about herself and it's in the post how about that cheryl anthony welcome to the lisa baxter show come on dr anthony woo woo Judah International and Christian Center, uh, uh, Christian Center Incorporated. I know I had to get it together there. You know what I mean? I get excited every week and every time I got a guest and I feel so honored and privileged to have you. I loved you only forever. I love you, so, and, you and there's something you can do about it. <laughs> okay. Okay, now we're gonna get the ball rolling, and we we welcoming you, and at the same time, now you have so many things that you've done with and for the community. But I would like to ask you a little bit about all the things that you do with you know some of the titles that you have in these places, if that's okay. You know, I know you did something with Bam. You know, you're doing things with the church, and you're doing things with your own things. So let's start by that. What you do. And tell us how you do it, how you orchestrate it, how you execute it. Come on. How I let me first say thank you so much for allowing me to be on with you today. Um, we salute you, we honor you. You have been doing this for over 10 years, and we are just so proud of you. The Lord is using you to do great work in the area of health and my the minority health. And so thank you so much for having me to join you on today. Uh, I'm excited about what God is doing and what's happening here um, in the body of Christ and in the world even right now. So um, I know that there are some people who are discouraged and disappointed, I'll say, um, going through uh, a number of things, but we have to know that regardless of what's going on, that God is still on the throne and he's still in charge and he loves us and cares for us. So um, there are a number of things that I'm doing. The uh, project that I'm working on now deals with uh, mental health, looking at mental health in the body of Christ. Uh, I'm concerned about clergy, uh, my fellow clergy, uh, men and women who have been and doing the work uh, and need some help, some support, some resources themselves in order to continue to take care of the people that God has assigned to them. Wow. That's a lot. That's good. You know what I mean? We, we need everything out here. We need all hands on deck, you know, the medical field, the clergy, you know, the body of Christ, you know, the warriors, you know, whatever illnesses they're dealing with, we still need the help and all hands on deck. I'm glad you were involved. You know, I was very impressed when you were telling me that you were one of the first responders when it came to uh, 
what was it, nine one one Sandy, and talk a little bit about that. Well, I think that I come from a family of service providers. Uh, my grandmother, my mother, uh, my sister, um, all of us have just been in the area of service. And so uh, when 9-11 hit our feet, I was working with the New York City Central Labor Council uh, on a project that talked about or that addressed labor in the pulpit. And understanding that people who were in labor unions needed spiritual support and guidance. And so working with them, 9-11 hit. And, um, and I was a first responder because I was working at that time with the unions, with uh, uh, NYPD, um, with 1199 and, uh, I don't know, 32BJ. And so... Uh, there were people that I had personal relationship with that were affected by 9-11. And so with 9-11, um, I became a first responder. And then when um, Superstorm Sandy hit, uh, I was a first responder. And uh, as a matter of fact, I chaired the Brooklyn Long-Term Recovery Group for Superstorm Sandy. And now here we find ourselves in this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And so it is another crisis that affects people um, in ways that we never think about or even imagine. So I've been working to assist um, faith leaders and leaders in general in terms of self-care and then how to take care of the people that they've been called to take care of on behalf of the father. Wow. That's all right. Beautiful. Wow. Woo -hoo. Wow. Now, now, even in our own church in New Life Cathedral, you were also able to help with, help with some things as well. So um, with New Life, uh, which was my original home church, which is where you I had um, probably yes. 30 years ago. <laughs> so you don't look a day old, at least. I mean, I'm great. Oh my god, hallelujah! That. But, uh, cut it out. Um, about 30 years ago. <laughs> well, I'm telling my age 30 years ago. Um, yeah. okay, but you're still a baby to me. <laughs> now, I mean, Bishop started the church when I was 16 and I'm 58. So, I mean, you know, so that's a long time and knowing you a long time and being there too. So I'm just glad you're still on fire with it. You know, some people get a certain age or get a certain illness in the house or they shut down or they give up or they feel like the call is over. But you don't feel the call is over. I don't even feel the call is over. So many people out there don't feel it either. So I'm just proud you're still going on and you're still doing. I'm, I'm very proud of you. Well, the, the the truth is, I think that I have been um, that I've come into the kingdom for this particular time. Everything else that I've done in the past has led up to um, the day and the time that we're living in right now. So um, I'm excited. Well, tell us a little bit about um, Judah International, the, uh, the woman of faith. Tell us a little bit about woman of faith. And then I would like you to tell us a little bit about, um, yeah, tell us about woman of faith. Well, let me go back because uh, women of faith is an outgrowth of Judah International. And so Judah right. International um, was established back in 1996 um, in the living room of my my home. Uh, it was around the time that we had the uprising in Crown Heights uh, with the murder of Gavin Cato, uh, a young um, boy in our community was hit by one of the uh, Hasid the Hasidim in our community. And, um, and there was an uproar. And at that time, my sons were young men 
but very much concerned about what was going on. And um, they were angry and they wanted to, um, they, they wanted to retaliate on some mm. level. Didn't know what kind of retaliation because they aren't boys from the street, but yeah. um, they were they were affected. And so I began to do a Bible study on Sunday morning um, in our living room. When I said to them, I said, the Lord has called me to, to establish a church. And they were like, oh, that's wonderful. Uh, where? And I said, here in our living room. And they were like, oh, <laughs> But we were in our living room probably for about a year. What was interesting was that they had friends who were um, dads and that they would have their children on the weekend. So they would, get mm -hmm. their, they would have their children. They would come by on Sunday, mm -hmm. um, have service with us, and then take the kids to the park and then take them home to their moms because they were kind of co-parenting at that time. So. Um, nice. That's how we started in 1996, and um, have done a you know a, you name it, we've done it because I I, I just want to believe that the Lord put me in place to be the kind of go-to pastor in our community. So whether it was HIV and AIDS, domestic violence, um, youth, uh, you know, problems with our youth, reentry. Um, whatever it is or whatever it was, um, we were able to be a part of that and, and develop the, uh, the programming that's being done now um, with faith-based organizations. So we help write that legislation. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You do a lot of stuff. You do things with the state. You do things upstate, Albany. You do things with the, the senators, the, you know, legislation. I, you know, you do it all, and that's a good thing. If you have raised two sons yourself, and you're a grandmother now, and you know what I mean, and you help people that were co-parenting uh, with the moms, you know, because some people don't get along when they co-parent. So I'm glad you were able to, uh, you know, sow that type of seed or start this type of church or thing right in the living room, and now it, 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 it mushroomed out. So that's good. Well, thing. we thank we thank God we opened some doors and allowed us to be able to do some great ministry, um, not just here but abroad around the world. So, um, in Africa, South Africa, the Congo, um, Nigeria, and then in the Caribbean. So I'm excited about what that is doing. I'm loving that myself. Now, I'm going to switch a little bit of gears here. Now, you also mentioned to me um, when we were talking that um, you're a breast cancer survivor. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, in 2008, 2007, my sister transitioned from breast cancer that um, turned into lung cancer. And um, in 2000 and 2000, 2008, um, I was diagnosed at the, uh, the end of the year um, in the fall with um, uh, breast cancer in one of my breasts. It was interesting because in 2008, I was blessed to be the Brooklyn coordinator for, at that time, Senator Barack Obama. And um, and I was back and forth. I was in Denver um, when he um, got nominated and they accepted him to run as president. And so um, I was back and forth and I missed an appointment. And when I finally got back to the doctor, they said yes, it was breast cancer, and that that they and that they would have to do the surgery. And so um, I am. I'm not a breast cancer survivor. Um, I am a breast cancer conqueror. Uh, bre uh, breast cancer is something that happened to me, so I had it as opposed to it having me. On now, 
You know I ain't mad at you. Peach up in that corner, straighten it all the way out, <laughs> break it down. Yes. 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 All right. Yeah. Well, you don't look like what you've been through. You know what I mean? You really don't. And um, was that a hard thing to go through or a hard thing to deal with? Or um, what I know the Lord kept you going, but tell us something, Sean, though, that could have kept you going. Oh, bullshit. Well, my, my, my faith is strong. Um, I come from family, uh, uh, people of God. My mother um, was one of the mothers in the Church of God in Christ. And so uh, at five, I, um, I gave my life to Christ. At 12, I was a Sunday school teacher and the secretary of our Sunday school and um, have just understood um, the love of God and that he loves the period and oh. having that assurance of you know who he is and who I have the ability to be in him um, was my foundation and so um, that's just who we are we know that that's he can do know. anything we know you know um, there are some folks who had a challenge COVID in terms of did God send it? Did he do it and this and that? Um, the thing is, he has given us time. We're always saying, I don't have enough time. If I had time, if I had time, I would do this mm. and I would do that. He has given us time. And the question is, you know, what are you doing with the time he has given you? Wow. I preach something like that on Facebook. You know, if you had the time with the Lord, what would you what would you say or what would you do with him or how would you spend it? So I ain't mad at you. You ain't never lied. Come on here. You know, wow. You yeah. Know, so yeah. it is it even it's with the COVID, my faith. It's increased my faith. I learned a lot. I learned stuff that yeah. I haven't learned before. I gave other stuff a chance. I spent more time with family. You know what I mean? Um, got to even know myself, got to know God to leave even more better. You know what I mean? And spent more, excuse me, time with family. So that's a that's a great thing and a good thing. You know what I mean? I was I was wishing it didn't last this long, but it is as long as it lasts, uh is you know, I'm glad he's keeping us anyway. So, you know, he's keeping us now. Um, do you have hmm? Do you have a website? I just said he's keeping or, us day by day. Oh yes. Oh absolutely. Um, second by second, moment by moment. Mm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So our website being um reconstructed, we have judahinternational.com and Judah International NYC. And so you can um contact us. On, on both of those. By the end of the week, they should be fully operational. But um, as you would say, we had an issue, but we ain't mad. <laughs> That's right. Wow. I don't know nothing that you haven't done. I still remember the time when I admired a hat you was wearing. I thought it was so beautiful and I complimented you. You took the hat off and put it on my head and I still have that hat. It's probably in storage. But I still got that hat, and I always admired and thank you for the hat. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. You know, but yeah, yeah. Single mother, is there any words of wisdom you could give a single mother or a woman that might have want to start a business the way you did, or a pioneer like you are? Well, the, the first thing that I would say is that you probably have to know why you're here. What's your purpose? Why did God create you? Why did he create you and send you into the earth realm? And in sending you into the earth realm, what is it that you've been called to do? Um, once, and, and the only one who knows what you've been called to do is the father, the manufacturer, uh, you know, if you want to know how a, um, a a Ford or a, a Chevrolet works, you have to go to the manufacturer. So once we understand that he is the manufacturer, that we are the model, 
and that our Bible is the manual. So if you want to know how the product works, you have to read the manual. Um, I tell people often, if you bought a brand new computer and it had an instruction book, you wouldn't take it out of the box and just start plugging stuff in. The first thing you'd say is, as much money as I spent, I am not going to mess around to try to figure out what this is. I'm gonna read the manual. And so, uh, we are products. We have been sent um, uh, from a, a kingdom, okay, where where there is a king and he's in charge. He sent us in the earth realm in order to accomplish something that only, only we can do, okay? He gives your assignment with eternity in mind. He gives it to you. He tells you, don't worry. I've got everything that you need. You can depend on me. Um, go into the earth realm and get what you need uh, uh, occasionally, uh, supportively, in order to be able to fill, fulfill what I've called you to do. And so uh, understanding that we are ambassadors of Christ in this earth realm, we are here in order to exist in this earth realm. You have to have an earth suit, so you got to have a body. But when it is all over, we will report back to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords to um, to to be graded to a degree on what we've what we've done and and what we were sent to do. And so um, you got to read the manual. You got to read, read it. Got to read it. And it's good to read it. You know what I mean? Good food. Good spiritual food. <laughs> oh yes, oh yes. Now, uh, is there anybody? From assignment, I was just saying, from assignment to assignment, from glory to glory, and so um, it is ever evolving in order to be um, what he would have it to be. So I would say to someone, if you if you are looking to start a business or, or do something, first of all, you need to find out what the father has assigned to you and then go back and get him to outline it for you, give you the strength, give you the direction, give you the support, give you the tools, okay? Give you the compassion, give you the love um, in order to be able to accomplish it. Amen. So that's wow. Crazy. Even as a single mother, I believe God has guided you and helped you with those things as well. So so whether it's business or anything, whatever your title is, you need the manual, you need the guidance, and you need to know what your purpose is. So whatever you do, do it on purpose, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Well, who would you give a shout out to if you had to give somebody a shout out just before I end the show? Because I told you the 30 minutes really do go fast. Unless we forgot anything or you want to add anything before your shout out, you're more than welcome. No, I'm just excited to be here and glad, you know, to be used by God. That is, you know, that's what um, my purpose that's what that's my purpose to be used by him to glorify him um and to let you know world know that he's still God and that he has not forgotten about us he has not abandoned us um uh, if anything I hate to say we've abandoned him and I think that all of this that's going on is about trying to get our attention and have us to know that he's speaking even at this very hour. So my shout out, a shout out to my, my grandchildren um, with all the things that I've done and been able to do and travel and, and have met some um, incredible people. Um, uh, I've had the opportunity to meet uh, uh, Winnie Mandela and uh, Rosa Parks and Princess Diana, but the most important Important individuals in my life are my grandchildren, and um, 
and I'm excited to be a grandmother. This is my greatest role. Um, I am making memories with my grandchildren, spending time, and um, they have taught me how to be present. Sometimes we show up places, but our mind is cross town. We're not there, but I have learned how to be present. And I have a six-year-old, um, her name is Kamora. And one day Kamora and I were talking and she said something and I really wasn't paying attention. And she said, Grandma, did you hear me? And I said, yes. Yeah. She said, well then tell what I said. <laughs> I tell it because I really wasn't listening that closely. And so from that one experience, um, I am always, I'm present where I'm present. Okay. And so um, I am here and this is it. I'm not trying to do my phone or find something or, you know. And so um, the thing that I've, I've learned, the greatest thing, be present in my own life. Amen. You couldn't have said it no better. You really yeah. couldn't have said it no better. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you're going to have family, you got to be there for yeah. the family. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you want a friend, you got to show yourself friends. Mm -hmm. Even the world talk about that. And there was no better friend than Jesus. So um, I'm glad, you know, that we all are family and friends out here, you know. And um, I just thank you again for coming on. I thank you again for sharing. And I thank you for, again, for being a, a good example you know, to, to us, to us all. I appreciate that very much and giving us uh, pearls of wisdom. So I want well, you to thank definitely- thank you so much for having me on. Uh -huh. Well, you are so welcome. You are so welcome. Keep doing a great job. Keep doing what you're doing. Enjoy those grandchildren. You know what I mean? And keep doing what God wants you to do. Do that calling. All right, keep doing that call. Amen. You know, and uh, and uh, Amen. you have an excellent, fantabulous, beautiful, yeah. wonderful, awesome, outstanding night. Thank you. And the same to you and same to each and everyone who tuned in tonight. Just want to say thank you um, for, for listening for being a part. Thank you. I want to call you Dr. Lisa. You've been doing this. That Somebody somewhere ought to give you a uh, a, a certificate or, or a license. Uh, amen. Because the work that you have the work have done over decades has blessed us. And you have shown us what it looks like to be steadfast and movable and consistent and of what comes and goes you are still, still proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, I've watched you through the years and we are just so, so proud of you. So proud of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate you it. Encourage us. You encourage us to do what we do. Yeah. Wow. Well, you and we're keep getting it ready up. to yeah, yeah. We're going to work on the diabetes project with the women of faith. And so we're excited about that. And the depression, you said, too. So good. Excellent. People out there need all of so that. Let me just, let me just, so let me just say this listening. one thing before we go off. People deal with depression when they think about where they've been and what they might have lost and what they no longer have. When they think about that, they become depressed. Mm. And when they think about the knowing the back holes, they have anxiety. So mm. when you go back, it's depression. When you go further, it's anxiety. So if we can just stay centered and stay focused, um, we'll make it day by day. Wow. Well, thank you. That was beautiful. Oh, I, I think I got the, uh, the high sign. All right. So um, I went a little over, but I thank you again. And I'm going to end the show really quick, but I got to say something before thank I you, end Dr. it. But thank you, Dr. Anthony. You've been a pearl. Okay. You've been a pearl. I ain't thank you. you. God bless Love you. Me. Love you so much. God bless you. 
Guys, you have heard it. You have heard it. You have heard it. My next week guest is, oh, is Paris Rochford. That's right. He's a dean, a clean dean. All right. And he's in charge um, with the uh, public system of uh, with, with schools, with the school public system. All right. Uh, all right. I wanted to give condolences because my cousin Junior died, who we call Brick. So please pray for my family. Dina Taylor was a, a kidney warrior that also had passed away. And Charlene O'Reilly, a good friend that I grew up with on the same block, had passed away yesterday. So please pray for her family. Okay. And and our dog Marky had passed away too. He was a little teacup dog and we were just boohooing the whole weekend. So my family been spoiling me a lot and sending sending me different like little treats and food to try to cheer me up and cheer each other up and stuff like that. But pray for my family and thank you for tuning in. Sharing is caring. All right, so please share this. This is nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. I love you. God bless you. V for victory. See you next week. Mwah. <laughs>